lesson, we're going to be covering dog and cat anatomy, and specifically, I'm going to be identifying the six most important parts of the body structure and assigning basic shapes to them so that it's easier for us to manipulate them later as we pose the animals. So here you can see it is a skeleton of a dog, and I'm going to go ahead and draw on directly on top of this uh image of a skeleton. We'll start with the skull. As you can see, the top ridge of the skull has uh, its sort of flat and runs parallel with the flat top ridge of the nut muzzle. So after you draw the circle for the base of the skull, those two parallel lines can help direct you and help you form the shapes that uh, eventually will be the muzzle, which is a sort of like tubular shape out uh, stretching out from the circle of the base of the skull. And then you've got that diagonal line down from the tip of the nose that kind of angles towards the chest area of the dog. And here I'm going to be adding some ears. All ears and dogs can vary based on breed, but I'm gonna go ahead and just make these sort of triangular shape. And then I'm gonna move on to the neck where I will connect the base of the jaw to the chest with this sort of um, long tubular um, shape. Now I'm moving on to the shoulder blades. So in the four-legged animals, dogs and cats, the shoulder blades are not attached to the back like they are with humans, but rather on the sides of the ridge, rib cage. But a lot like humans, they have all of the same joints. Uh, for example, we've got our shoulder joint, elbow joint here, and then at the elbow joint, there's a, a sort of tube-like shape that will go down to the wrist, and then that will uh, lead into the paw, which is very similar to the different joints in a human arm. They're just kind of located in different places in a dog. And now we're moving on to the trunk portion of the dog, and I will be identifying the front chest area and the back area with two circles. The back circle is just a little bit smaller than the front. And then I'll connect it together with a sort of like bean-like shape. And then after the trunk is uh, shaped, then we're gonna move on to the back hind legs, which uh, that hip is going to lead down into the knee, and the knee is going to lead into the ankle. And there's a sort of uh, crescent moon shape between the back of the hip and the ankle. Here we're gonna talk about the six different parts uh, that we just went over. The first is the head, and we talked about the flat ridges of the top of the snout and the flat top of the skull. And then we talked about the neck, connecting the bottom of the jaw to the front of the chest. And here we have the shoulder blades, an indication of the shoulder blades on the side of the rib cage. And then here is the trunk in the middle. The trunk connects the front to the back hip. And then finally you have the legs, which I would, uh, I would say that the legs, the limbs of the dog and cat are probably the most complex part of the anatomy because of all of the joints. And so I'm gonna go ahead and draw out the lines where these joints meet. So here you can see that the leg in the back kind of moves forward towards the inside of the body and then moves out. And as you can see, there's an elbow here in the front that leads down to the wrist. And then in the back leg, we've got the knee, which again, angles forward inside a little bit towards the inside of the body. And then there's a crescent moon from the back of the hip back out to the ankle. And then here, just a reminder that the shoulder joint is in the front right where the chest is. And then you've got your foot pads on the bottom, which I just indicate with little uh, oval-like shapes. No need to get too specific in this phase. So now that we know the different parts of the body according to the skeleton of a dog, let's go ahead and try, without using the skeleton, try to replicate this, uh, the six basic shapes of a dog in this profile view. So I'm gonna start with the circle of the head 
And just like in the skeleton, that top ridge line of the, of the top of the skull is going to run parallel with the top of the snout. I'm gonna draw a diagonal line towards the uh, bottom or the chest of the dog and then draw in sort of triangles for the ears. And now that I've got the muzzle or the snout and the head, I can go ahead and start making an indication of where the neck will be. As you can see, I'm drawing a line from the bottom of the jaw down to the front of the chest. Now I'm gonna go ahead and draw the first circle that will be my indication of the chest and then the back circle that is the indication of the hip or the hindquarters. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw on top of that and show where my shoulder blades in the dog are. And for this purpose, I'm going to show where the joints are, the shoulder joint, the elbow joint, and then we'll have this tube-like shape that will meet down to the wrist joint. And then at the bottom, you can see the paw shape extends from the wrist. Now that the front limb has been drawn, I'm gonna go ahead and connect the trunk. And as you can see, the back hip is just a little bit too far away. It needed to be a little bit closer for it to be believable. And I'm gonna go ahead and connect the front circle and back in the sort of bean-like shape and make an indication of where the hip is, the back hip and the knee down to the ankle. The knee moves forward and I'm gonna get that half moon shape for the back part of the leg that meets at the ankle joint. And then I have the paw the back paw that will be slightly forward, just like the front paw. Another important concept to understand is knowing what parts of the body in these animals are flexible versus rigid. And that will allow you to better understand how to pose them or um, demonstrate movement in them later when you're creating your designs. So for example, the neck, the trunk, and the tail of the dog is much more flexible than say the hips or the shoulders. And uh, the limbs and the legs can only move certain directions uh, without hyperextending their joints. Now the basic shapes of the body that we created here are pretty simple and they're 2D, of course, but now I want to start focusing on how to pose the dog knowing the structure of the animal. And so in doing that, we have to take these 2D shapes and think of them more as 3D. So I'm gonna be talking now a little bit more about posing the animal and taking these shapes and making them more 3D, spherical, tubular. Here are some drawings that I've made of three different dogs, three different poses to kind of give you an idea of how I approach my gestural phase of drawing. So and the first thing I do is indicate the line of action and the three major parts of the body, the head, chest, and hindquarters of the dog. The line of action here also can act as the spine. Once you have your base shapes drawn, you can start creating the other shapes to build up the body of the dog. It's important to learn to simplify the forms of the animal that you are drawing, but make sure you know where to position the most important structures of the body, such as the neck, hips, tail, and limbs. I always start with the head. I first use a spherical perspective vertical line to indicate the direction the head is turned. And then I use the same perspective line horizontally to indicate the eye line. Where these lines intersect, I can add an oval-like shape protruding outward to represent the muzzle. I like to add a little vertical perspective line here as well so that I can gauge where the center of the muzzle will be and where I can put the nose later. After the head and perhaps the ear shapes are drawn in, I connect the head with the chest. And then the chest will then connect with the back hip circle to make a sort of bean-like shape. Generally, the chest is larger and more oval in shape than the rear. Um, from here, you can mark in the shoulders, knees, ankles on both the front and rear legs. 
You want to take note here that where the elbow bends, the uh, forearm is moving upward towards the chest and the wrist is limply uh, aiming towards the ground. Make sure that you know the direction that all of these limbs are able to move and you can do that by watching videos of dogs walk or run. And then in the more refined rough sketch, you can see that I add in the eyes and mouth and nose and maybe some spots and patterns on the fur. Okay, now we're moving on to cat anatomy and we will approach this the same way we did with the dog by using an image of a cat skeleton and drawing directly on top of it to assign basic shapes to the six major parts, just like we did with the dog. And we'll start with the skull. The cat skull is same in some ways. Uh, it does have that flat ridge on the top of the skull, but instead of having a parallel snout, the snout angles downward towards the ground and the muzzle and jaw of the cat is much shorter than most dogs. So I'll go ahead and draw up here uh, the shape, the profile shape of a dog muzzle and top of the head. You can see the snout is much longer um, and the top of the head is parallel. That flat line is parallel with the top of the snout. And with the cat, you can see that it angles downward. The um, jaw is much shorter. And although some breeds have a short muzzle, um, for the most part, dogs will have a longer muzzle than a cat. And here, um, I messed up the angle at the top of the head and wanna make sure that that's flat. And you can tell that the flat angle of the head um, is not parallel with the angle of the snout that goes uh, angles downwards toward the ground. And now we'll move on to the next portion of the body, which is the neck. And the back uh, will just follow the line of the spine and the bottom of the jaw will attach to the base of the chest. Now, a little bit different from the dog is the chest and the hip circles may be the same size. I like to make the back circle just a little bit bigger um, just to make my cats more voluptuous and chubby. Um, but here we've got, I'm gonna be marking the head, the neck, and then this area here, which is the trunk, and you connect the front chest circle with the back hip with that sort of bean-like shapes, very similar to the dog. And then here I'll move on to the shoulder. The same principles apply. The shoulder blade is actually attached to the side of the rib cage. And then you have that sort of crescent moon shape that will land at the edge of the elbow and then down connects to the wrist. And when it comes to the back limbs, very similar to the dog, you're going to have that half moon shape from the back of the hip down to the ankle joints. And then you can see that you have the hip, knee, and ankle joints, very similar to the dog. Now what's different about a cat is the cat's rigid portions of the body and flexible portions of the body are much more exaggerated. Uh, the body, the trunk, the neck, the tail, and even the limbs seem to be more flexible than a dog's limbs. And we'll go over here that yes, there's an elbow joint, there's a wrist joint in cats, but when you think of a cat uh, moving and pouncing, they're very, very flexible. Their legs can move uh, much more freely than a dog. So the posing opportunities when it comes to a cat are much more free and uh, you have more variety to choose from. So now let's eliminate the skeleton and see if we can use all of these basic shapes, the six basic shapes, and create a cat with no reference photo here. So we'll start with the head. I'm going to get that flat ridge on the top of the skull, and then the snout that sort of angles downwards towards the ground, and then we've got that short jaw, that short muzzle. I'll apply this triangular ear shape. Most cats have that triangular ear shape. Now I'll move to the neck where I'll connect the bottom of the jaw 
to the front of the chest. And here I'll draw in my chest circle and hip circle. This cat is a little slimmer than I normally draw my cats. I, I like to have a kind of a chunky looking cat, but this one's a little bit slimmer. I would argue that the back hip circle and the front chest circle are about the same size. And I connected them with a sort of bean-like shape. And here I'm gonna draw in my joints for the limbs. So I've got that shoulder joint, elbow joint, and then it'll connect down to the wrist. And then the paw will jut out diagonally forward onto the ground. And then we'll move on to the back limb. Here I'm taking, drawing in all of the marks for my joints. I'll make that half moon shape from the back of the hip down to the ankle. And the same, that sort of half circle shape from the front of the knee down to the ankle. And then the paw will again angle forward towards the front of the body. Now we're gonna focus on posing the animal now that we know the basic structures. And uh, even though we've applied specific forms and shapes onto the skeleton, which helps us ensure that we have a believable character, I like to think that there's definitely room to experiment, especially when it comes to the trunk. And as you can see here, I have a line of action indicating the uh, pose or the action that I'd like for the character to display in the gesture. And then I apply the three major circles, the head, the chest, and the rear. Now, the rear and the chest may vary in size, especially if there is a perspective uh, element to the image, like this, this uh, pose, the character is walking towards the viewer, so the chest is much closer and therefore it's much larger than the back hip circle. This is a great example that demonstrates why we need to think of these 2D shapes in a 3D world because these shapes are going to change in size and in uh, their own form based on the 3D space that they are taking up. Here I'm going to go ahead and draw in my perspective lines in the head and where they intersect that is where the nose or the top of the muzzle will be and then I'll connect the neck to the chest and then the trunk together with this sort of bean-like shape. After the trunk, head, and neck have been drawn in, I'll draw another perspective line just so I know where the chest is facing. And now that I know the direction of the chest, I can find uh, the points of the shoulder and mark in all of my joints, elbow, wrist, knee, and ankle. And after we block in all of our shapes, we can reduce opacity and then draw on top and get some of those details in, including the shape of the eyes. And in this, I went really cartoony. This is not the same style that the original draw over the skeleton is. I wanna make those eyes really big and forward facing. I flattened out the top of the head and I also increased the size of the nose. And here's where you can have a lot of fun and start experimenting with some of the elements and characteristics that you want to uh, put into your character, adding fangs, whiskers, um, and this you can get from referencing images of cats. <laughs>